do another one, but uh, do like wait a bit after the recording because if it if it's too long before. Oh, you just I started. I don't yeah, get like get the, the pre-video. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah, yeah. so it's it's been recording for a while right now. So you're probably good. Yeah. Go ahead, peek the mics. Joe Andy, podcast episode seventy-seven. This is Alex Caravan, director of data science, uh, ripping a Bodhi Zaffa, and our guest here, who who will introduce in a second, bro. Slow down, calm down. I know he's excited. Hey, hey, hey. hey. Gave me a couple waters here, so your boy might be triple fisting. Mm -hmm. Got some caffeinated AHA, uh, mango plus black tea, and then the blueberry pomegranate, which is a classic, which I've had before. Uh, so your boy stays hydrated. Never actually had an AHA. Uh, Kyle Lindley, Pulse product manager, drinking a butt heavy, baby. It's been a bit, but this is the OG. Very nice. And I'm Anthony Brady, director of sports science, travel and baseball, primary host of the R&D Research and Drinks podcast. I got to make a note that... Uh, the primary host thing is is mostly uh, a joke. Cause no, no, I, I was... would correct you for fifty <laughs> episodes, dude. I'm I'm good as long as you can. I mean, dude, you you set up with all the production. I, I'm good with you being primary host. Well, I was just thinking about like how uh, how weird how it looks, douchey is like, that? Yeah. yeah, like I was thinking, you know, if if White had never seen any of the yeah. other podcasts or you know, yeah, yeah. that was a thing, he just comes in and right away I'm like, yeah, I'm the primary host of the uh, R and D research and dreams <laughs> yeah. podcast. What was um, inside joke to that? I forgot as well. My, know, my boy yeah. Mikey, uh, making you a primary host. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we got a guest, uh, John Sauteropoulos. By the way, sorry. Go ahead again. John Sauteropoulos, hitting trainer here at Driveline Baseball. I brought my fleet of ahas. Oh, we're gonna start off with the lime watermelon. Yo, nice. do, do you want one of these only? Do you want? No. Do you want to pop your cherry? <laughs> I'm good, dude. They're unreal. They're on the end. They're on the end cap at uh, the Safeway I shop at all the time. Price wise? No, no, like. The end cap is like the display on the end of the aisle. Yeah, that you, know, has... you know end caps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but, but... <laughs> you know, you know uh, grocery store terminology. Uh, we're not trying I... to get. You trying to go on grocery outlet again? <laughs> we're talking no, about no, no, no. we were talking about. Five I just walked by those every long week when, I, when I walked to my Lacroix, dude. I'm a Lacroix guy. Oh, okay, I thought but you were saying I'll this is like to... a little too high end. It's like a dollar, a uh, oh, dollar extra per twelve cans. Dude, do you guys know what the? Yeah, um, I'm not sure. You know the produce section. You know what that's called? Like grocery store terminology. The wet wall. Well, mm. that's not the whole produce section. That's just but yeah, like yeah, the, the, the lettuce. The one up and you think cabbage. I talk about inappropriate stuff on this podcast? No, I'm just saying. It's <laughs> dude, wall. let's keep it. Let's keep it PG. I mean, dude, Sean, Sean teaching me up on on grocery things. <laughs> his, all his Winco knowledge. So. Uh, <laughs> anyways, uh, Sauter, so, so, you want to give a little bit about your background? I mean, me and you go way back. Uh, me, falling on the court, uh, Cal. Yeah, me, me and Alex, we we go way back. Uh, my yeah. name is John Saropoulos. I'm originally born and raised in Southern California. Uh, I went to school at Cal Berkeley. That's where I. That's where I met this guy uh, in Locking the your ass down. in the basketball court. I remember playing against somebody wearing like these untapered kind of garbage bag sweats, <laughs> like windbreaker sweats. <laughs> <laughs> you know the ones I'm talking about. Uh, like, like MC Hammer. Yeah, I was having a good day too. Like we'd won like two or three in a row with my with my homies, and then I couldn't get past somebody and I didn't know who it was. I was like, this guy's crazy. He's got like a beard and long hair. Uh, and then That's a couple of years. I'm not it, sure if he's homeless. Yeah, like he's either really smart. Cal? Yeah, or like he jumped over the turnstile, maybe both. Uh, <laughs> he rolled in with a shopping cart, carrying all his balls. from outlet. Yeah, from the grocery outlet. And then uh, fast forward a couple of years later and then I figured out that it was this guy working at Driveline together. <clears throat> Excuse me, together. Uh, played at Cal Berkeley for three years, which was fun. Played with Max Dudo mm -hmm. and um, Bird, Robbie Tenerowitz. So that was pretty cool. And then Brett Cumberland as well, who trains here. Uh, and then I graduated from Cal and spent a year playing as a graduate transfer at Cal State Dominguez Hills. Ooh. Go Toros. <laughs> and then after that, played one year of independent ball in Japan. Yeah. And then uh, found my way up here. Yeah, so you came after after you were in Japan is when you came out to drive on for your first time? Yeah, so... After my first year it, at, before my first year at Dominguez Hills, um, I was good friends with Jason and Dudo, and I was like, I got to get up there, and give myself a chance to train. But I only came for a week the first okay. time. Uh, regret. What did you, when was that? That was twenty eighteen. When what did a, you meet Jason? Did you meet Jason? I met Jason Dudo? through Dudo because uh, I used to go to the Menlo games because oh. I was living back in LA. So I would catch some of the Menlo games, and then that's how I met Jason. Nice. Yeah, nice. we met. We met in. Uh, we met like spring 2019, right? I was wearing that Palace Verde. Shirt, yeah, 20, and you thought I went to Palace. That Verde. was spring 2019, yeah. but I had come the yeah, year okay. before okay. that as well. But I didn't stay very long, and then yeah. that year I thought I might play again after my first season in Japan, but I ended up not playing after that. Yeah. 
but, just, but, but, uh, but, but when we met you were you were still training right? we're, we're i was still training yeah, yeah you yeah, got yeah. a job in cr like a couple weeks later. yeah yeah because you ran my uh i remember in the good to learn class you ran my quarry yeah, yeah, on my yeah. exit velocity <laughs> and you told me how bad i was and like three years ago i couldn't understand like why all that was bad and now i'm just like that was just, those are some sorry number oh, wow. <laughs> so when when you came out in 2018 was that like uh i guess what'd you do is you, you were just out here training for a week like hitting yeah i came facility? i came for the assessment and it was in two four and you guys had just gotten five four up and running like the mm -hmm. only per i think the only two people in there were mike upstairs and um i think it was just mike upstairs because dan O'Coin was mm -hmm. running cr oh, okay. i remember walking into two four like didn't know anyone you know like didn't want to cause like too much ruckus and uh dan was just sitting dan was just sitting down like leaned back with his headphones on. i was like who is this guy <laughs> and like he checked me in and everything and like sent me upstairs and there was protein powder and like oh, a wow. fridge with a bunch of milk uh That's and i trained there i trained there for a week me it was like me jason dudo and like one other person would, would hit we'd always sign up for the last group and um the I'd never hit on with technology before. Mm -hmm. And so it was like a cool experience, but I didn't know how to interpret any of the feedback yeah. as well. So it was like a good gateway and everything. Uh, looking back, I should have just like sent it and stayed that whole off season. Yeah. Um, which is why I came a little earlier the next off season, but ended up not playing anyways, mm -hmm. but it was fun. And like a lot of the same principles from when I trained in 2018, like still apply. It, yeah. it, I just remember it being a ton of fun. And that was yeah. primarily with KVS and Blast uh i don't think we had kvs at the time it was mostly hit tracks blast and um uh, the hack attack <laughs> the yeah. hack attack just just eat just eating me up yeah, at like 9 30 at night yeah. <laughs> um and then edutronics were still just on the pitching side i think that was the second uh second hitting off season i believe mm, dude that okay. yeah that's me that dude and kozak that setup was kind of oh, insane wow. for people who who aren't super familiar our old facility we had three different warehouses one was like the business and warehouse one was the research lab and then two four was our like main main, main training area yeah. and the hitters had to stay till like 1 a.m in the summers yeah 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 it was fun though so yeah, so, so so i mean that's a, i think that's a good place to start like th you know three years later you're you're, you're running assessments you're, yeah. you're on the hitting side like what, what are the big things that have changed say someone had only heard of javelin hitting four years ago yeah what, what are big things if you if you had to break it down for them yeah that's a that's a really good question so like from 20 let's say from 2018 to 2022 what has kind of changed or even just from when i started yeah. as a hitting trainer in 2020 until 2022 like we'll start with 2018 the tech was there like the hit tracks was on the blasts were running um we had track profiles as mm -hmm. far as like how we interpreted that data or like what got filtered to the athletes we didn't have those pipelines built out yet yeah. um i just remember hitting and like seeing random numbers flash on the blast and it was just like everything started with a six like 66 to 69 <laughs> and just not knowing like what was important not knowing like how hard i could expect to hit the ball with with that type of bat speed but then also looking at the hit tracks too but like not using both or like knowing how to interpret both um but i know i knew that like i was training with other guys that were better than me playing at higher levels and like their numbers started with a seven and like their exit velocity started with a hundred. So like that was a good place <laughs> to start, especially for someone that's still playing. Like yeah. I might not know how to use this information, but I know that my benchmarks aren't there. Like once I yeah. learn more about it. Um, so then let's go to 2020 when I first become a hitting trainer, like a lot more pipelines built out in terms of like what the athlete gets. So like say an athlete were to come in and hit like you get the blast you get the hit tracks k vest as well and edgertronic film so like those are two big add-ons to the assessment process as well as reports that get uploaded into track and then like the swing design at the end swing of design, the assessment yeah. and then the athlete meeting as well so like those are two like the swing the athlete it's like athlete meeting and then swing design those are two really big parts that like tie everything together so that you can make sense of everything that's coming in yeah. um Added K vest, right? What's up? You said yeah, added K vest. Part of yeah, the added K vest. Yeah, added K vest and Edutronic. And this is 2020. Um, and then like this is what you don't do well. This is what you do do well. Like we're gonna work on this with a training program that's gonna get uploaded into track. 
and we're going to run your edge reports every week, yeah. every two weeks, something like that. And then you're able to track your progress, especially if you're there for a longer period of time. Like if you're there for one week, then it's like, oh, shoot, I need to be here for a longer period of time because yeah. like I'm lacking. And this guy that knows way more about hitting than me is telling me it's going to take at least six weeks to fix, right. you know. Um, so like that would be 2020. If we go from like 2020 to 2022, I think the changes are even like more exciting. And oh, yeah. like you can you, you guys can speak to that, too. But like. We still have the same baseline. Like whenever you hit, hit tracks is running, blast is running, um, and the like Edgertronic and K Vest every week for yeah. data collection day. The biggest add on to the assessment process has to be the motion capture lab. Yeah. Um so like that is really, really exciting. I know we're gonna talk about that a little later, but in terms of like evaluating your mechanics and mm -hmm. being able to have like a trainer break down how you're moving through space, it's it's really interesting. Like we're only gonna be able to make more like i don't know about like valuables right word but like better insights. training yeah yeah insights yeah yeah yeah, yeah. better insights to help you get better even mm -hmm. faster along with like increasing your bat speed and helping you hit the ball better yeah via hit tracks and then like the athlete meeting um has only gotten better as like us collectively as a staff have learned more like yeah. we've trained two years worth of athletes in that time like we know what works better and what works doesn't and then like in terms of structure on the hitting floor um we have a lot more cages <laughs> yeah yeah we have a lot more cages you, you won't get you won't hit at 11 p.m uh unless you really want it uh Pretty but nice like room. yeah like we have more structure to what we do every day in like the old two four days it was kind of like dealer's choice which is good because everyone's like on the staff is smart but as we expanded and stuff like yeah we have a machine schedule so you're hitting sim you're hitting in a similar environment for like weeks at a time mm -hmm. and then you'll be able to see like how your bat speed tracks in that environment so it's not like oh i my bat speed was 76 that day because you only hit bp it's like yeah. you're hitting the machine and like short box on structured days so that you can track your training over time and then we keep it interesting too like we make sure that we don't fall into like a rut change and make stimuli. it super monotonous yes yeah, change yeah. the stimulus and like uh for guys that are here a long time we gotta make sure it's fun too you yeah. <laughs> yeah, can do yeah. the same thing for six months like gotta mix in some fun yeah yeah i think in insights uh kind of what you were saying is like one of the bigger value adds on the the biomech end um i think i was telling these guys but i was uh I'm, I'm gonna put together like a collage of um the spring training videos you know yeah. of like the guys we've, we've yeah yeah the skeleton ones yeah, yeah yeah do that on the pitching mm. side too um create like a short like I don't know, maybe like a minute long worth of those. Um, I'm going to go through the backlog of like all the pitching ones. I just, just did one for John Gray and a bunch of others. But just like kind of speaking more to the idea of like a lot of a lot of coaches and experts out there that they, they claim they're experts. A lot of the times they claim that they know exactly what the best in the world do. Yeah. You know? And like not not that we're claiming one to be like experts or, you know in that area but we actually know what a lot of the best in the world do because we have that like biomechanical data yeah. and so whether yeah. or not you know depending on what we find out or where we go just having this idea of being able to watch like you know nolan arenado swing and know exactly how he swung you know like we we've quantified his movement down to to the joint angles you know joining good velocities, ground reaction forces, all of that, like um, whether or not we are the most skilled coaches, like people can go out and just like debate that however much they want. Have you not but, seen Sauter soup up some hitters, dude? <laughs> we, it's people skills, man. To. You got you to gotta have good people skills. You know right. that, dad. Yeah. But, but like regardless of that, right? Like even if we just, you know, took a, a low grade coach off the street and like brought them on as a, as a trainer yeah. or something or a coach of drive on, like regardless of that skill right away, they have access to our like library of data that we've collected. And so they can know how the best in the world actually swing and actually pitch. Like yeah. if we didn't do what we currently did with biomechanics, which is actually trying to, you know, quantify developments and improvements over time and find trends across like cross-sectional, like, uh, research and analyses that we do, trying to find like metrics of importance. Like even if we didn't do all that, at the end of the day, if we just looked at the biomechanics data, we know how like pros and the best of the best move. So we're just going to accelerate those kind of yeah. insights that, that you're talking about. Yeah, I think accelerate the insights is like the most exciting as a trainer, the most exciting. Mm -hmm. um, 
because like on my i mean i'm not a pitching trainer but i think the way you guys do it at least in the certification is like bucket it between guys that throw less than 88 and higher than 88 and yeah. like no 92 right yeah it's yeah. 92 now yeah, yeah it's, it's, okay too many flamethrowers too many flamethrowers or too many youth, or too many youth kids in the data center yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> bang them bang them <laughs> um but uh yeah and then just like over 92 share these commonalities mm -hmm. what, what is it like yeah gap retraction elbow extension yeah, they velocity do like all these things really well yeah, yeah they do them like obviously it's not binary x y and z but like mm -hmm they do them um, a little better than the guys that throw slower. And right. then along with everything else, like looking at just athlete to athlete and like yep. eventually we get more hitters in here. We're going to know the same thing with bat speed. Yep. Let's say like arbitrary 72, like mm -hmm. guys that swing over 72, guys that swing under 72, like we're going to have those same insights that we're going to be able to coach and create training yeah. plans with. So like instead of trying to figure out which drill works by trial and error, we're yeah. just going to have like, we're going to be able to have a hierarchy of drills based on swing flaws. That's going to accelerate the process of yeah. gaining bat speed. And then like, even with uh, like the collision efficiency stuff, like Ben's right up, yeah. like that's a little more galaxy brain, probably like off in the future, but like what goes into successful smash factor is also super yeah. exciting. It's not like for, for like, I'm looking at it, it's just like, okay, let's, let's get you swinging fast. And then like, we'll worry about squaring the ball up perfect. Yeah. Cause instead of like going from 102 to 104, cause you can square it up perfect, just swing two miles per hour faster. Right, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then you're good. <laughs> cause like, we know how to track that and do that well already. Um, and then like, maybe we'll get some value on the margins yeah. with like the X, Y, and Z bats. <laughs> yeah. But I think that's like one of the more exciting things on the, the hitting stuff that we're getting into right now is like, it's almost like when we started the pitching thing, we knew that velocity was the most important like right away you know and then we didn't really yeah we knew command was important quantifying it is a lot harder a bunch of other factors things like efficiency arm health all of that like yeah. trying to account for it it was a little messy so it was really easy early on to just do like velocity and i feel like on the hitting side though we're far enough along in terms of like the big three and knowing what what really matters in, yeah. in hitting primarily where we can start to focus on those insights and analyses that you're talking about, not just for bat speed, you know, but doing mm -hmm. things like, like smash factor as well. Cause maybe there are those certain, you know, biomechanical parameters we were talking yeah. about. Like I'm pitching like this gap retraction, hip shoulder separation, yep, that stuff. Yep, yep. like maybe there are key ones for, you know, prioritizing like bat speed. And then there's other ones that are, okay, well guys with really, really good smash factor, they typically do this or something. Yeah. So it's almost like more tailored, based on like a, a needs analysis for the mm. hitter. I think that's like one of the more exciting things where on you, the you, hitting side, we're just, we're further ahead of what we yeah. know matters. And it's, I guess, easier to quantify than, yeah. than the pitching side somewhat. I, I was about to say, I, I feel like you're, you're almost like a hitting buckets version mm -hmm. would, would be a little bit more more straightforward. Yeah. Because we have, yeah, like like when we started like mocap, like, you know, general population mocap analysis, we were primarily focusing on on veal, like you yeah, said. It's it's like veal yeah. up good. Where, 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 where we have like three, still good. <laughs> yeah, we have we have a big three. Yeah, we have a big three that is very quantitative, and then we can start gleaning. Like, we we can start going. Okay, like this guy's been in for a week. This is where his big three lies. Yeah, this is where his initial assessment was on the on the hitting side. Six weeks down the road, what went in, what went into his training? Where's his big three now? Yep. Where's his retest? Yeah. So I, I see what you mean. Like like yeah. it's 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 almost like comparative to. Like we, we advanced the hitting sabermetric analysis before the biomech yep. analysis, whereas mm -hmm. like pitching was, again, we, 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 we knew enough to know that velo is like the, the biggest thing to push someone's yeah. down level up, but we didn't necessarily have like command plus stuff plus. Exactly. Whereas now we do, we're like backlogging that as well on the pitching side. Yeah. And those, I think those other two are, well, command is probably the one that, you know, we're interested in maybe seeing in the biomechanics data, what pops up. Like we've talked about those like yeah. really big bullpens doing some intended, intended, zones, intended yeah. zone stuff and figure out if there's like kinematic stuff related. I think the same thing is possible for stuff, but it seems pretty unlikely that it's going to be as strong of a signal as there is for yeah. just velocity, right? Whereas yeah. like I feel like on the hitting end, a lot of the other aspects of the big three outside of just like bat speed uh, movement wise, I feel like we'll see some some pretty so strong signal comparatively at least yeah i i mean you got my head spinning um 
just for like the ahas, baby. Yeah, the ahas, the ahas got me yeah. buzzing, bro. I need to switch to a beer. Yeah, the big three: bat speed, bat to ball skills, smash factor. Uh, smash factor for the listeners and for you, Dad, and the watchers, and the watchers, a lot of, a lot of watchers. Is is how well you're going to be able to transfer your bat speed into exit velocity? How well did you square that ball up, and how consistently do you square the ball up? And then how often do you swing and miss? Or hit a foul ball so it's like how we quantify our bat to ball skills grade and then bat speed is just how fast your bat is moving six inches from the end of the barrel um we measure that using blast motion sensor and then we also, also measure in the, the mocap lab yep. um but yeah i think i like the point that you had like we're just starting biomech yeah. seven years down the line yep. yeah. we have like a stronger sabermetric foundation and we have the big three so we're going to be able to go down like more like we're going to be able to infer what's important a lot more and spend our time there instead yeah. of like trying to go down different alleys. Yeah. You guys would know better than me, 100%. but it's, it's, that's what it seems like. Well, another thing too, on the hitting side that we're doing right now, um, kind of technology and just like operational improvements have changed so much. Whereas like in the past when we were doing pitching, it was like collecting three good pitches and like getting it all cleaned and processed. Like that took a lot of time. Also, we didn't have any of the back end stuff dialed. Like this mm -hmm. is the pipeline you know, DB. Yeah, the real like more nerdy back end stuff. Of fuck, just, like, bro. What did mean, you like, say to me? The, the most people don't care about, but just like in the what? past, it was like uh, if we wanted to do a pitching analysis, yeah. like Caravan and I, and when I say Caravan and I, I mean like 95, 95% Caravan. Like I would ask him something and he'd be like trying to piecemeal together all these different like text file exports that had like no standardization and stuff but now everything goes straight into yeah. a database we and best is able to, yeah Besky's oh yeah able the db is crazy right best is able to whip up the db viewer that yeah. any of our trainers can have access to and just like instantly get some like bat speed by this position literally anything correlation, like right away I that shit in the past i see those posts on ig solder yeah 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 yeah, yeah. That, yeah I, I i was i was uh I, I never knew the biomechanics before the database. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I don't. I don't know the. <laughs> no, I don't know that you putting the, together the, the text files. Yeah, it was. It was. In, in, it was like in four hell. three. I mean, it wasn't hell. It was honestly pretty fun. We yeah. just like sat by each other and yeah. like. It, it works in a smaller before. company, and, and, and when and you're, you're like smaller data. Too. Yeah, and, and when your home is with the person working primarily. Yeah, yeah. yeah versus <laughs> like yeah, uh, trying to explain it to yeah. a bunch of people. We also, also only had like uh, a handful. There was a point where we only had like nine people that had ever thrown over 90 in the lab yeah you know? i remember you talked about that yeah. one of our our biomech meetings yeah and right away right now on the hitting side we're just like getting big leaguers off the bat you know yeah so we're we're in a much better spot uh, uh, so for, speaking of those db viewers i want to give basket a quick shout out uh past podcast obviously uh he's the goat cl cl close friend of mine in my department uh the db viewer by the way was like pr pretty you know pretty much solely besky's idea because i remember yeah. having a conversation uh, you know, whatever it was like nine months, a, a year ago when we were kind of revamping projects at one point, you know, we were probably going through some wartime periods I, I, as, as we go. And, and I was like trying to stress to him that a bunch of his research that he was doing was, was cool, but it, it like, we, 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 he was, he was valuable enough and, and talented enough that we needed like a, something that scaled more. Mm -hmm. And then he just like thought about it pretty hard, came back with a few ideas and one was a DB viewer. And he's like, mm -hmm. what do you think of this? I was like, I mean, that's a, I think that's a really fucking good idea. <laughs> and, and, I mean, I'm really happy, like I said, because it's like something that looking back seems, seems obvious in retrospect, but yeah. we, we really, we, 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 we really simplified, I think, uh, the ability to get insights from yeah. our DB for, for yeah. almost anyone internally. We, we like, it like democratized the information yeah. internally, yeah. which is just like, yeah. at, there was a time in the biomech side where if you had a request or something, it was like, like I, it was, I had a whip of a correlation. It was hard to do local script or something. Yeah. 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 It was tough. It was like, Hey, can we get this? And then, you know, we were changing pipelines and stuff. And so going through those growing pains on the, on the pitching side got us to the point where it was like, when we set up the hitting side, it's like, all right, we're not going to, you know, add in the five years of growth that we went yeah. through on the pitching side. Cause we're already there. Yeah. So yeah. the, the back end stuff being cleaned, like, even though you maybe don't know about all that, like, yeah, the, the insights are crazy accessible. Yeah, the crazy hitting, accessible. It, it's just so much easier now. So much easier. Yeah, so even things as simple as like uh, figuring out how to view the three D skeleton. Like we put that together a couple, or Anthony put that together oh, yeah. a couple okay. years ago. But like you guys are pretty fluent in opening it up in Visual three D and actually looking at the skeleton, and being able to look at the like line graphs and everything, and yeah. 
take take some things away from yeah. that. So I yeah, that, I, mean, I, I wasn't until like you showed us. Mm-hmm. You we had like the initial meeting, I think, mm-hmm. and I just like screen recorded it and would watch it over and over again and get into it and just learn by doing. But yeah. like. Yeah you guys put those together and otherwise it would have just taken a lot longer. <laughs> yeah. You guys whip around and, and visual 3d is crazy valuable yeah. too. Well, that's, I think that's one of the things is like super nice about it too. Cause I mean, honestly, from my perspective, like I'm way more removed from the athletes than I was, you know, yeah. back in, back in 2018, yeah. 2019, where when, when we're going on the tour stops, like I'm spending, every day with like jigs and sam and those guys like just talking about pitching mechanics and stuff when we were getting into it we would have the athlete meetings you know like that was really good to like see the little anecdotes or or things that pop up metric wise and then be able to like chase that down whereas like now that being more removed it's a lot harder but the things like the biomic db viewer and stuff like that it just gives all our trainers access to it to where when you you're working hands-on with a guy and you see something or you see something in the assessment retest, you can just go in and be like, oh, is this a thing? You know, like this guy had a huge spike in, in bat speed or whatever over his, you know, six weeks of training and biomechanically, like I noticed that this metric really changed yeah. positively or negatively. Like let's go into the DB viewer and and see, you know, yeah. did other athletes have this or, or things like that? Yeah, I was looking at Gary. He wrote a blog on Wyatt Young plays for the Mets oh, easy dad he uh like re- read into the whole thing and then he had the test like initial mocap and then he had the six weeks down the line and like I think his torso speed average average torso rotational velocity went from like 900 to 1200 mm-hmm. in the same amount of frames and like he had a oh, gif yeah. that was synced up and like why it's bad speed went up like six seven miles per hour average yeah. bad speed and like that might not have been all of it, but it's probably a pretty big part. Yeah. Like, um, and like you just can't without a test and retest, you don't even see that oh, in yeah. the in the first place. If you're just like looking at video, yeah, yeah it's like, like this is so like he laid this out so clear, like it makes sense to literally anybody. Yeah. This guy's moving faster in the same amount of time. Hundred percent. That's awesome. We talked a lot about the insights and the assessment and how that's improved. Uh, yeah. What about the like training environment? Training like whether it's the implements we use, yeah. the drills we do. How has that changed since when you, you first started? Uh, uh, the Wednesday. Yeah, out we have, we <laughs> have. So I first we're day. starting with Camo, Tuesday. Camo Monday, <laughs> Tie-Dye Tuesday. Camo Monday? Yeah, it's Camo, because it, it's like Camo Monday. Oh, you get it? Like Camo, Camo Monday, yeah, yeah. Tie-Dye Tuesday. Tuesday. Camo, like, White Fit Wednesday. Yeah. Or uh, Wolf Shirt Wolf Shirt Wednesday. Wolf Shirt Wednesday. Yes. Red, red Sweat Thursday. Jersey Friday. Pink shirt or sweatshirt Saturday, and then okay. Sunday you got to get to church, Dad. Uh, <laughs> um, but in terms of like improvements, the one like we have our machines out. It seems trivial, but like uh, <laughs> getting your machines standardized and knowing what's coming out of them is mm-hmm. like crazy. Wow, that's a that's a good point. I, Important. I, I can honestly say I haven't thought about that until yeah. you just said it. Yeah, like wow. I was. It, it was like twenty twenty. And I was just like getting into all of Alan Nathan's stuff and like learning more about pitch physics. And that just like the cage is like a construction project. Like everything needs to be marked out. Yeah. Cause if it's like, if you're trying to, for example, like 36 feet, I say, say we're working on a move. Like you can't, you can't lift the ball as well as you should. Mm-hmm. And it's a bat path issue. Uh, we want to work, break that down. We want to work on how you're able to strike the ball and your bat path. So like I'll set the machine up at 36 feet and have it come out at 60 miles per hour. I know that 36 feet is good because the spray of the balls coming out of the machine won't be like this. It'll just be all like this. Like you'll see after. So it's like, we're standardizing the location. And then I know that 60 miles per hour speed is not too easy to where it's slow and like your timing yeah. will get messed up. It's not too hard to where you start to worry about squaring the ball up. So then like we whittle all that down and we're just training your move of how you're striking the baseball. Mm. So like that's one example. Um, so like 42 foot machine is good for training mechanics because yeah. the location is in the exact same spot. Whereas like you move the machine back to 56 feet, you have it throw harder. The level of difficulty increases. So if you're working on like some type of mechanical type change, 
I don't know. It might probably not the environment because you're not going to get as many reps doing the same thing. Like you're not going to create those like layers of skill to where he gets a feel for that movement. You're yeah. just going to be like, I'm getting diced. You know, I got to get my foot down or yeah, whatever, yeah. whatever. Yeah. Like, well, you're going to go, you're going to revert back to like whatever has made you successful in the past. Yeah, yeah. And you're not going to be laying down any new skills. Or even worse, like just trying to like regressing a little bit to make good contact or whatever. Yeah, we talked yeah, a little yeah, bit even with worse. Jason about that. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. It's, uh so like getting the machine styled in is super important mm -hmm. like for us i don't think it's it's still valuable but like for i don't know like a pro team like knowing exactly what's coming out of the ma machine via a track man mm -hmm. would be crazy if i'll talk to chris about this like just knowing the like not so much the spin axis and spin shape but just knowing the long form movement i think yeah, yeah. like the the horizontal and vertical break and velocity and then uh you facing josh Hader. Yeah. All of a sudden, the first two swings you take, you don't miss underneath because you've already missed underneath ten times your first round in the tunnel, yeah. and then like you're you're just dialed in. Yeah. It's like this guy's throwing seventy percent fastballs. Like it. it's not as hard to hit because my mental model is calibrated to hit that pitch. Like that, there, there's value there. Uh, I just like we don't go face Josh Hader. <laughs> you yeah. don't go from the cages <laughs> to Josh Hader, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, but um, like yeah, and then the yeah no one's coming on the machine like i was talking to dudo to max dudo he's riding the the hacking the kinetic chain what? hitting edition oh trying that dog. they're both they're co-authoring and I'm, I'm 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 reviewing you trying bro. to get in there uh yeah i need my name on okay. the author okay. list <laughs> um, i was telling him like we need some type of spreadsheet that is like feet um or like feet velocity and then it's conditionally formatted for difficulty level. Oh, nice. Uh, and then you just know, like, okay, this machine's at 40 feet and it's throwing 80 miles per hour. That's nice. like dark red. Yeah, yeah. This is not a good environment to hit <laughs> in. Like, you're just going to get diced up. Because yeah. you see it, like, like I said, it seems trivial, but you go watch anyone else hit, like, you'll see the machine going too slow. And yeah. it's like, what are we working on? No plan. You see the machine going too fast. Yeah. What are we working on? No plan. Like yeah. breaking bats. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You gotta, you gotta know what you're trying to accomplish. That could and be like so much negative feedback could just like crush a player. It, yeah. It's, it's <laughs> negative feedback. But it's the wrong negative yeah, feedback. Yeah. Cause it's like, it's you can't not overcome it. Yeah. Like negative feedback is good when you're hitting the machine at 95 mm -hmm. and it's like pretty accurate. And then you're like, I keep missing yeah. underneath. Why? Cause you like, you're swinging up too much. Yeah. Like you don't know how to hit a fastball with a lot of lift. Like that's good negative feedback. Yeah. But like the other, you like, could kind of like cheat into bad habits. I feel like, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, but what are we, yeah, I think we started that with saying like, what's improved. Well, we have the machines dialed. Machines dialed <laughs> yeah. The machines are dialed. We know, especially like we, we know what we're trying to work on. And then, like, we have the smash balls, too. Yeah, yeah. So like Stuff like that, smash balls, or even, even any of the other bats and stuff, too. Yeah. Altering the environment and then knowing the difficulty level of each environment. And then also knowing who's hitting. Mm -hmm. um, so, like, one, one, let's say, like, a high schooler versus, like, a really good college player. Uh, the environments, while they might be working on the same thing, the high school environment might need to be a little easier to get the adaptation that you want. Whereas, like with the call, like really good college player, you might be able to work on two things yeah. at once. Like let's work on his torso rotation, hitting the ball to the pull side, as well as challenging his, his smash factor with like how well he can square the ball up. Yeah. Whereas with like the, with the high schooler, it's like, let's just get this kid to turn mm -hmm. and feel comfortable swinging as fast as he can to the, to the pull side of the field. And we want to make sure the ball is moving slow. So that way he associates like this movement with success. Yeah, yeah. Even though like in reality, if he's getting cut up, but he's still doing everything right. Like he's probably still getting yeah. better. <laughs> yeah. Damn. That's, um, there was a, there was a question I wanted to ask, uh, Dudo and Oach actually when they were both on, but I never got around to it. Um, but like one of the things that I've always kind of thought about with, with hitting that I didn't know, uh, and I'm, I'm down to hear your answer on this is like, in pitching specifically with us, you know, definitely in the past, we've had the typical driveline thrower that, that comes in, you know, gets a ton of velocity, goes back to school. Um, and the other like aspects aren't quite there. Yeah. And I think there's a, there's kind of part of the problem is like, we've talked about like a development and competition type continuum that pitchers are on during mm. certain times of the year, you know, like, uh, I always talk about guys in school that would come up in the middle of the season and be like, Hey, I want to do the driveline stuff. And it's like, well, <laughs> we got a game tomorrow at, you know, five, yeah. like you're not just going to do a velo phase and find a couple ticks or like, 
change your mechanics in the middle of the season, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. get down the mountain, improve your COG. There's, yeah, yeah, dicks. it's like <laughs> we, we can't work on that type of stuff in season because like you got to have, you know, command and pitchability and yeah. stuff. I feel like that's, I don't know, I guess like, do you think that's a, a problem that's unique to pitching or does that kind of exist in hitting too? Because when I look at hitting, I think about how you structure the environments and like, could you work on those like movement and mechanics things and on a Tuesday? Cool and then be good in the game? Or do you need to also have that continuum of like, I'm developing mechanics or I'm in competition mode? Uh, I That's, dude, that's a good question. I think that me and Doodle were literally talking about this last night. Like there, I think hitting, you can still train for bat speed or moving fast because mm -hmm. like, there's not any chance of acute injury. One. Yeah, yeah, Like a lot that's, smaller, that's a lot true. smaller. So like you can do yeah. a, let's say you play college, you play, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, you can swing weighted bats as fast as you can on Tuesday, yeah. and you don't have to worry about your your arm being really sore when you yeah, got to start yeah. on Friday. Like you're still good to go yeah. because the implement's bigger. Um, and then like, I think the continuum is maybe like closer yeah. as as to why I'm not sure. Like there's, I think it's they got a couple theories. Like one, there are some guys out there that can swing the bat really fast. Mm -hmm um they just don't end up playing for yeah. whatever reason like if you can pitch i feel like if you can throw hard mm -hmm. and you can kind of get it around the zone like there's someone that's gonna let you on the mound. Yeah, well, well, also it's it's radar, radar gun radar, radar gun be more popular than yeah 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 100 yeah, percent. Right? Like, 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 like if someone throws 100 you're gonna know they're gonna throw on a radar gun they're gonna throw yeah. on something yeah if someone like swings a bat 80 miles an hour like they might not even know how to show that. And yeah, they don't know. How to yeah, that's a right. really good point. It's way easier to market, yeah. and then like you also you can throw ten fastballs at a hundred, and someone's gonna care. Yeah, you can't swing the bat eighty against a machine. Like you're gonna that's need true. like you're gonna need like 200, 300 bats against good competition. Yeah, the only way you get that like one ten or something. Yeah, yeah. Like the only way really... you can do that is to be kind of good in the first place to play at that level. Yeah. So like most of those guys that may swing fast or hit the ball really hard have already gotten mm -hmm. weeded out because they don't make it to double A, like single mm -hmm. A, because it's just like not as binary with who they're going to give opportunities to. Yeah, yeah, it's interesting. So it's almost like on the, because uh, like on the pitching side, you know, it is really valuable to, if your raw assets that you have, like just velocity, for instance, aren't there, it's definitely in your interest in like an off season or going into the summer, right? Um, deciding between, do I go play summer college baseball or do I go like train? Like if your velo is really low, like it's in your best interest to do, you know, what I did and what everyone else in that 2016 class did, which is just go to driveline, yeah. train your dick off for like three yeah. months, you know. Brady's case is literally his dick off. <laughs> 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 just like, you know, pull downs, velos. Like, dude, I didn't throw off the mound, you know, like that whole time. Yeah. But I built up this like throwing fitness and velocity potential yeah. and ceiling that I didn't have. Whereas like on the, on the hitting side, you know, it, it, is there, you know, maybe a time when I guess if someone's like bat speed was super low, it's in their interest to just like sell out on a, on a crazy, like four to six week bat speed program and take that in or, or I guess like hitting because of the volume and stuff you were talking about, yeah. you can just work on that in tandem. You know? Yeah. You can do it in tandem yeah. a lot, a lot easier. Yeah. Definitely. And then like, I think with pitching, it's like with pitching, you're trying to throw as hard as you can off the mound. Yeah. With hitting, you're trying to swing as fast as you can against a pitch yeah. from yeah, 56 yeah. feet. So yeah. like guys will swing faster in flips. Almost always it follows this progression. Like mm -hmm. guys will swing faster off the tee. It goes like tee, flips, batting practice, short machine, big machine, directly linear of how fast guys are able to swing the bat. Yeah, For yeah. whatever reason, like there's a couple uh one balls moving slower like they can just swing faster easier environment can move faster and then like two once you get farther back like you miss hit a ball call it like scared barrel you kind of manipulate your barrel to get the barrel there which mm -hmm. is it's good it's a good skill to have but it's going to slow down your bat speed um mm -hmm. so it's not like you can just get up on the mound and like throw 10 fastballs you got to bridge the gap between like yeah you may be able to swing the bat 76 miles per hour but you're only able to do that in flips yeah. so then you're like bridging the gap and then a lot of times just anecdotally i think like guys if if like there's a weight like i tell a pitcher to throw harder and i tell a hitter to swing faster to try and yeah. swing faster without caring about squaring the ball up 
like the weight for how much gains you're going to get with the cue for the hitter, you're going to gain more bat speed yeah. comparatively to the pitcher just because like you're telling them it's okay to swing fast and not worry about hitting the ball. Mm -hmm. And like, you're going to pick up bat speed that way. Like, I don't know if you're increasing like rotational output, but the blast is good. Like you're swinging faster. Yeah. 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 That's, in, that's interesting. Like, um, that you could, you know, just like a hitter training on the floor at any point. I mean, you could probably like pull them out and just throw them in live ABs or, or into a competition. Whereas like pitching, Pitcher, that's, yeah, that's have, definitely not the case. Yeah. You know, you, there could be a guy training out there that hasn't thrown like a bullpen or something off the mound in a decent amount of time. And that, and it's in their best interests, you know, to kind of do that. Right. It's like, yeah, even right now, I'm not necessarily like live AB ready tomorrow. You know, I'm close. I'm, I'm like close, but take like, you yard, bro. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you, I still have the footage do when the, when the youth camp, OG youth camp booed you because you couldn't hit you couldn't, they, <laughs> the kids in four, three. I was like, come hit, come hit. What? And then I said, if you hit a home run on the youth field, then I'd give them all like, 10 bucks or whatever oh yeah 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 and you laid an egg <laughs> and all the kids are like why can we hit it farther than him 12 year olds bro these are 12 year olds oh my god no, I, won't, I, won't, I won't add anything to that story because uh, <laughs> it's true and then terry came in terry came in started dropping nukes oh yeah terry, terry was dropping they nukes. were yeah. they were chanting terry terry <laughs> or gary or gary i don't remember which one because gary was pitching <laughs> no no it, it was terry. terry terry dropping nukes i mean i mean you've been uh yeah, I mean, you gave Terry a swing design, right? Yeah, yeah a couple. And, 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 our, and our old homie, Mel Bell. Yeah, you, you, yeah, yeah, you, yeah, yeah. You fixed her up. She hit a home run yeah, last yeah. week. Yeah, last that's week? what Terry told me. Yeah. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. She, she's still playing on the slow pitch team? Yeah, she hit one over. She hit a home run, Terry told me. Fuck yeah. Oh I get weekly updates that's from Terry tight. on Slack. Good. What the hell is Terry slacking about <laughs> on <a> Sunday? <laughs> <laughs> Another Cam Bam uh, invite? Yeah. yeah, I wish. I wish. Results. Yeah, that's electric. Oh, uh, one thing I was gonna ask you What's to up? to kind of mention for the for the viewers, you talked about weighted weighted bats, yep. weighted balls, yep. smash balls. Uh, did you you kind of want to give a quick quick rundown of the common like implements we use? Yeah. Uh, so like no particular order, weighted bat or axe bat speed yep. trainers, three set of three. Um, two are gonna be heavier. Two but, twenty but percent way, I'm heavier. Fuck, I'm ripping the second brew. <sighs> you need that caffeine. You, you want this? I'm alternating, dude. Uh, you can, I, you I, can, I, I didn't. You I didn't wait, wait. Don't don't you don't you have one? No, yeah, I got two in the fridge. Okay, okay. In the fridge. I mean, dog. You know, they're pretty far. Yeah, That's, I haven't, I haven't tried one. People know what they are. I, just, I basically like, I was, I was you up about weight of bats. I was, I was locked in. Hadn't drank anything for the last hour. I already pounded an aha and a beer. Let's I'm go. trying to go. I'm trying to go two beers, two ahas, and then hit the bathroom after this. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> uh, weight of bats. The um, two are going to be twenty percent heavier. One is going to be twenty percent lighter. The green one, the extra weight's on the end, which means its moment of inertia is gonna be mm -hmm. higher, which means it's gonna be harder to swing fast. The red bat, the extra 20% is gonna be on the handle uh, underneath the pivot point, which means it's gonna be easier to swing fast. Er. Um, and then the blue one's 20% lighter. So you're gonna be able to move faster just in general. We program those out um, two to three weighted bat training days a week. And then like you're supposed to gain bat speed from that. You almost always do. Uh, we have our hitting plows. Those are like the. Oh, we yeah. have them right here. Perfect. Always be product closing. placement, perfect, baby. Perfect product set placement. Of, right uh, there. Set of four. So these are squishy. Uh, really good for training smash factor. So again, smash factor is going to be how well you can transfer your bat speed into exit velocity. So you square these up, they'll feel really good. Oh, but if you don't, you feel like an idiot. You feel like an idiot. People. I mean, maybe people don't, but I slept on uh, how hard it would be to hit those. Fish. Yeah, these with a skinnier bat, when a skinny, I mean smaller diameter, are really, really useful because uh, you don't got to think. You just got to hit mm -hmm. and then and then take your feedback, right? Uh, and then we have the blast motion sensor to measure bat speed and the long bat, 37 inches, 37 ounces. Really good for sequencing because it's so heavy and really good for hitting the ball farther out in front. Because if you're gonna get the same ball flight, you gotta square it up at a mm -hmm. farther out in front contact point. And then the short bat opposite's true. Sweet spot's closer to you, so you gotta learn how to hit the ball deeper in the zone with the same ball flight. And then you also gotta turn a little later in your swing. Gets guys yeah. really comfortable hitting the inside pitch. And it's also good for adding like side bend. Um, what, what, what's the most swing, common maintaining posture? What, what, what's, what's the most common like? Uh feedback people get from the hitting plows when they miss it right like they, they're usually flutters. trying to yeah it flutters yeah. Yeah. yeah like flutter flutter is the best adjective i've heard or like but can you tell if someone's like pull heavy like you know what i'm saying like yeah from from, from just a hitting plow right you can tell so 
just from being out on the floor and like flipping to yeah a bunch of different swings like you'll be when you feed baseballs the lab, they're able to hit the ball at like different launch angles they lose exit velocity because they're losing collision efficiency right yeah. uh but when you feed the plyos you can't get the same ball flight everywhere because you're you're not squaring it up as good so it's not going to come off your bat pure yeah uh so like for example i have this one hitter offset open drill like he's standing open i'm flipping to him he swings down too much but there's like three inches in his swing where he can hit this plyo really good and that always results in like a line drive at the shortstop but when you flip in baseballs he's able to get ball flight he wants yeah. and then like what's the difference between 87 and 93 on the hit tracks not that big you know like that yeah. you chalk that up to a lot of different things but when it comes off your bat really bad then it's just like i didn't square that up so yeah. you have no yeah, choice yeah, yeah. but yeah. to know and like you just basically getting like you can hit the ball pure throughout a larger range of contact and then you're increasing your chance for success because yeah. you can like you're basically improving your contact quality and exit velocity for like 18 inches instead of like three and you're going to be off time a lot here you're going to be on time a lot here over the course of a season that's a lot of ex yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 <laughs> a lot of ex yeah, cheers, cheers to that dude cheers to ex wobicon god damn right god damn baby. right baby yeah that's fire that's fire that, that, that is another question i was going to ask you uh because yeah. because i mean you know just talking between us talking internally you you're, you're kind of like knowledge of, of saber metrics has i think it's like so something you should be proud of and, and are proud of yeah uh, what, what, what's kind of the best way you got into saber metrics and started applying it to um uh, saber metrics besides well, working your drive besides working at take out driving i used to in college my sophomore year at berkeley when you weren't getting locked up by me and when i was when i wasn't busy getting locked up by you in the in the garage in the <laughs> garbage pit in the garbage bag sweats um i started reading fan graphs sophomore year of college in all of my english classes yeah, nice, <laughs> uh, nice. me and dudo would just like really? crush every article that came out and like this is coming from no no previous sabermetric background just like this is an interesting site it's kind of hard to navigate yeah, but once you spend like badge if you're yeah. a member shit <laughs> yeah. down that they, they ui do get that, that shit fixed <laughs> david appleman you're out there uh once you get like two weeks and i started reading all those articles like i'm thinking about baseball mm -hmm. not incorrectly but i just haven't exposed myself to a lot of information yeah um so like read fan graphs for a long time and then when i got here like i had a decent background of like i could look at a profile and tell you like kind of what's good and what's bad but then when i started talking to more people at driveline like the o coins of the world the U's of the world and just like hearing you guys speak about stats it's like this is an area i need to learn a lot more about because like it's super valuable and yeah. it's there's there's more like the connection is stronger between statistics than biomechanics mm -hmm. if that makes sense i don't like trying to hate on biomechanics uh, but just just like no, outcomes like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you, yeah you can get numbers from yeah whereas we don't know yeah, yeah well, if we were to look at a game and we look at a pitch by pitch data yeah. For, uh, yeah. on the stack gas feed we don't know like what their scapper traction was yeah. what their you know yeah 100 percent was we do know what their ex robocon was to your yeah, point. yeah 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 exactly so it's like as i was looking at like i basically spend like decent amount of time every week like learning more about some type of sabermetric yeah, stat going him on that stack db yeah stack db uh sequel david besky legend <laughs> tutoring me um but like having that background is really useful for coaching a player like a lars or or like a arenado or bird in in the minors because it's like you can give them tangible goals one to accomplish during the season like you need to hit five ball each week you need to hit five balls over 95 miles per hour and above eight degrees yeah and like this is what we did with bird and like in two strike counts you either want to end that with contact you want to end it getting hit by a pitch or you want to end it getting walked yeah anything else that happens after that is fine but like we, we, we like me and dudo we sat down and like we we looked at everything it's like okay bird needs to improve his contact quality with less than two strikes the way he's going to do that is swinging for barrels yeah. like get your swing off if you're swinging strike rate your end zone miss goes up with less than two strikes that's fine just cover the fastball and try and hit it really hard at mm -hmm. a lower lower launch angle and if you miss hit it those are the ones that will go out but like don't aim up because yeah. you're swinging missing too much and then with two strikes 
like we don't care about barrels we want you to put the ball in play like around 12 degrees because that's where babbit peaks like with, with, with two strikes you're gonna lose launch you're gonna lose exit velocity one because bat speed goes down yeah bat speed goes down with two strikes i've seen it in the dv yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh <laughs> and then you're gonna lose exit velocity because smash factor goes down because you're swinging at more pitches in the strike zone that you yeah. can't hit as well. So like assuming those two things, you're gonna you're not like you're gonna hit the occasional home run with two strikes, but it shouldn't be the goal. Like mm -hmm. the goal should be low line drives, and that's kind of a way to hack X Wobicon. Mm -hmm. And like low line drives require fl a flatter swing, which is gonna cover the high fastball, which is what everyone's trying to throw. Um, go ahead. Oh no, I was just yeah. gonna say uh, one thing on the bat speed too. One one thing that we. Uh, Dan and I talked about in one of your favorite blogs, Pairing Blasting Head Tracks, part yeah, one yeah. and part two. Favorite. Uh, check it yeah, out on the blog. Um, it, it, block it, at two hours. It, it is, <laughs> is uh, usually, uh, like, yeah, x Robocon kind of tends to peak around 89 to 91% of, of someone's max bat speed, like when they're swinging at that. Yeah. So, so like, one thing we've talked about even in past episodes, it's, like, when you improve bat speed, you're raising your talent level. Yeah. Uh, you're not necessarily, like, swinging every, like, like your most successful yeah. uh like balls in play are not swinging 100% of your like back. It's like 90 to just You just bring that up and then your 90% percent percentile obviously goes up. Yeah. Yeah. And then we make contact with that. The ball is hit harder, goes yeah. further, Dude, higher, higher flexible contact. Yeah, 100%, man. Like um, just getting back to sabermetrics too, it's like you players, players love it yeah. because it's like, let's say angle. you've been told like, if I just get my, my, like my, I don't know, like my hands, back i'm gonna hit better and yeah. like you do you worry about where your hands are over the course of a whole season you're gonna perform within the bands of your true talent yeah. level yeah like barring something crazy but if you like do something different where you're actually changing your inputs mm -hmm. uh and like taking a different approach or increasing your bat speed or and like those all equate to different sabermetric outcomes like you you increase your barrel percentage you cut down your your two strike counts that end with a strikeout like you get your input, you increase your barrel percentage, all of your traditional counting stats are gonna go up unless you get like crazy bad luck. Uh, you put more balls in play with two strikes, all of your stats are gonna, traditional stats are gonna go up because you're putting more lottery tickets in play instead of ending yeah. ending with a strikeout. So it's like those two inputs lead to a lot better success. And then like eventually, like hitters will start to understand that they're just like, they should optimize for that all the time. Like it takes yeah. a, a diligent coach though yeah because like it, it feels good to hit 189 in yeah. the right center gap yeah. and like leg out a double yeah but like the x woba values on that are low yeah. <laughs> but it feels good so like optimize for barrels and then be happy when those happen but don't 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 optimize for yeah yeah don't, also don't way, try replicate. way less yeah but yeah like way less easy to uh, like just do that over and over again whereas a hard hit ball yeah is is yeah a learned skill yeah and then like just listening or like reading the base camp posts from ocoin from anyone else and like seeing how they think is is super valuable yeah. or just like breaking down like hearing somebody like Bodie break down a pitcher or like jason talk about a different hitter and then it's like okay like he thinks about it like this like mm -hmm. this is what he looks at and like there's commonalities between almost like all the ways we break down hitters but like everybody has their own kind of spin yeah and then like exposing fantasy baseball is a big one uh like hearing hearing fantasy yeah. analysts talk about um yeah i love i, 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 I helped them by the way i was showing the league yeah my, my, my homie's crazy fun do you, do you ever meet you, i think you, you probably met scott the dentist yeah yeah yeah, yeah he's yeah, a yeah. homie not very yeah, good yeah. at basketball right Watch up. he's not very <laughs> good at basketball I mean, is he the dude, one that's good he, uh, he's no no he, he's not good but but he, he he's he's like he's like a slightly worse version of me remember I, yeah I, I yeah yeah, yeah. Zero, i think you were there yes 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 but, but, yes but he, he plays he plays pretty similar to me he plays hard he plays pretty similar kind of guy you want on your team yeah yeah which it, by the way uh me and solder uh still have a pending bet of yes. a month of our salary i was gonna bring that up we're gonna play one-on-one -on -one for a month <laughs> for, of the, for a month of each but, one of our salaries but, the thing but you is, make the, like the two thing and a half is, times more than me but both our salaries may have changed since the last time we made the bet dude <laughs> our salaries, both our salaries may have changed uh, did yours go up uh mine for sure went up since the first time we made the bet yeah then we're good uh, that's wait, all that matters yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll talk we'll, we'll, we, we may have to do solder is a very good basketball player I, I usually give him shit because uh you know, as most good ball players during pickup tend to be, you know, you, you know, you you end up taking more shots than yeah. the rest of your team. Goodbye. But Jeez, yeah, you gotta man. shoot, bro. You All gotta right. shoot. Back to back Fantasy. to baseball. Uh something I wanted to ask you, John, yeah. was um you very clearly like crushed like learning more, taking advantage of yeah. a bunch of the resources here and everything. 
um like but you can see it in your content and how you like interact yeah. with hitters how you're training multiple mlb hitters uh etc what what do you think is your like favorite and most valued part of uh like your like how it is being a trainer uh here at driveline yeah um it's just fun to work here one period uh like there's it's baseball like anything in baseball yeah. is gonna be fun mm -hmm. if you're me <laughs> uh like two everybody's like-minded and like wants to learn more and like keep pushing the game forward like if i don't learn something new a day then it's like i just like someone else got passed me up and like mm -hmm. someone else already like, there's already like a bunch of people that are smarter than me here too so like just keep bumping up the knowledge level based on where you land in the company <laughs> uh and then like i guess the most like not rewarding but like fun is is seeing guys do it on the field mm -hmm. like see, seeing guys play well on the field very impactful it's easy yeah. to see an impact super super impactful we're at and the like, like peak of that right now too yeah right? now that the season's starting it's it's really fun to see guys like take it to the trenches and do well like oh we literally worked on that and like he's doing it like two i'm a fan of two strike approaches like he's he's swinging flat and like hitting this high fastball he might have been out but he hit at 95 at like mm -hmm. eight degrees like that's good uh so taking value and that's fun and like it's a game too it's so like you have the peaks and the valleys mm -hmm. which make it even more fun like when the guys play good yeah. so like see, seeing it come to life manifest on the field definitely and then like also just seeing long-term athletes get better at driveline like guys mm -hmm. that dedicate to their routine and like they understand that they're here for a long time yeah and they make sure to get their routines on point to get the most out of it yeah, yeah. And they're like i'm here for eight months like it would be nice if i got really better in two weeks but like i'm gonna do this i'm gonna do these things every day and like hopefully eight months down the line like i'm a lot better yeah and a lot of times those i mean almost all the time those guys get better in some yeah. capacity i think that's like the most resonant point from the like uh like company mission statement or objective yeah. you know just like helping committed baseball players and coaches like that's always kind of like resonated really well uh with me just in thinking of like how, how much time i put in trying to like become a better baseball player but just in the wrong direction you know like yeah. i was always like looking for for resources and direction and i probably like did a lot of things that didn't help my career as, as much as i thought they would yeah. have, you know and so us just kind of like dialing in that plan and um those committed athletes like seeing them really you know take it on i think it's always like crazy to see uh long-term athletes here that'll put like at driveline baseball in their bios you yeah know? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah I love here, it. it's like it's like it's like a lifestyle yeah like decision thing it's, it's like, an actual it's like an actual yeah. family we, yeah it's we like, like a, hashtag driveline family but yeah. that's just like what it is you like see yeah. like between employees, between mm -hmm. employees and athletes, between athletes, there's yeah. just like this. this there's no gimmicks. Those, there's no yeah. like, I'm just trying to like develop some quick bad speed or something. It's like, I'm committed to like becoming the best baseball player I can. And like, yeah. that's why I'm going to go here. Yeah. And this is now like, a this defines who I am, you know? I and and, really and cool. it's crazy to, to grow up too. Cause I mean, like a couple years ago when we were way smaller, I was way more involved hands on of like some athletes. And I, I, I would know people just from like, at least like, you know, seeing the hit tracks emails in, uh, yeah, yeah, know, in yeah, my yeah, inbox yeah. or like just, just like the data. And now like, yeah, I'll, I'll see uh, Twitter's Twitter accounts like that. I'm like, I don't know who this is. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Or, or I'll just yeah. be walking by on the floor and like someone will dap me up and be like, what's up, Karen? And I was like, I don't know that's an athlete or yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They, might be, up, they might be watching this podcast dude yeah. shout out yeah. to all the the podcast yeah. fans. shout out to everybody yeah. like, yeah. that caravan pimped on the training floor <laughs> <laughs> good, good, good to meet you too man yeah you know, i don't know what the fuck that yeah, no yeah. it's kidding yeah, i'm just fire. a third of the time fire. well damn that was a this is a banger you got you got any uh any quick like last second um questions or things for us well, one thing i want to ask you at least to touch on a little bit is, is uh some of the content stuff because yeah. i mean because you've done a pretty good job expanding your 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 uh yeah i mean your, your social media game yeah uh breaching like japanese markets yeah yeah me and, me and frank <laughs> baby yeah 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 like like how, how do you approach the content uh content game from uh platform? you just gotta uh, like consume resources i try to consume as many resources as possible yeah and then it's like this is interesting i wish i i try and take resources and then if i come across something that's interesting that i wish i would have seen when i still played i'm like mm -hmm. 
even if this isn't interesting to me right now, even if everybody at driveline already knows it's true, there's like thousands of players out yeah. there that don't even know this exists. Yeah. So it's like, I'm going to repackage this and, and put it on social media. Cause it's like, damn, like that could have really helped my career when yeah. I used to play. And then like, I think about like, take myself back to different points. Like you were saying in my playing career, like, I understand what this kid's thinking because I thought that exact same thing yeah. six years ago and I was so wrong. <laughs> like I was so wrong, but I know exactly what you're thinking because I have that exact same point in like my career that that like I was thinking the exact same thing. This is my problem. If I yeah. just fix this, like I'll, I'm the next level. I'm yeah, 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 yeah. It's like you, you got to swing faster, bro. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> it's not that complex. Yeah, like, re, like one, take, consuming your resources sparks a lot of ideas yeah. and then like, too there's a lot of cool stuff that goes on on the training floor yeah and just like making sure to post that stuff because you never know who's watching um and like gassing up the guys that are training here and and playing which is cool what do you have right now follower wise i think like three thousand something lynn and i were talking about racing a racing a 3k homies got a lead on me we should race to 10k 10k yeah name the three driveline employees at 10k all time uh past or present oh i mean bodie oach and Matty D. That's right. Oh, Odie Ocean, Ocean, Matty D. Yeah. 10K. I think Dean's Those are only close. ones? Those are the only ones. Oh, yeah. Dean, Dean's getting I think Dean has like 8,000. I mean, yeah. Jake's, Jake's, Rob are, they have, are they close. They don't have 10K. Yeah, they're close, I'm saying. They're close, yeah. Maybe, oh, maybe you're, you're probably getting close, too. You're about yeah. seven, right? Brady's, I think I'm at like 8.4. Four. 8.4. Four. But, well, yo, yo, who you got? Maybe. Me or Lindley to 3K. Lindley's got like an 8. I think... Lindley. Lindley, that's not even a hard question. Well, that's the thing, I was trying to get this bet. A couple of days ago, and he was, he was like, Yeah, I've just put so little effort, dude. That's the most impressive part of it to me. I put so little effort into like creating just like what, dude? <laughs> what that face you're like, for? You're like, it's that's a- the most impressive part, bro. I don't even fucking try. Homie's just on my D on Twitter. No, that's not what I'm saying. <laughs> it's most that's the most impressive part about John's content. Game, oh, okay, 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 okay. Jesus. Sorry. Sorry. Uh, Lindley's just catching strays. Yeah, dude. Not. What in the world? Nice question. Uh, I don't even try enough. Collateral fucking... damage, bro. No, bro. It's just like you're you're just it's like it's almost relentless, dude. You're just like yeah. on yeah. like even on things that seem like also to be clear this like i learn probably more from your account than like a lot of other places like regarding yeah. driveline but like even little things like how the relationship between uh attack angle and exit velocity yeah. or attack angle and x whatever um is like just like you just put it out somebody's gonna get value out of it yeah and it's just like probably super super helpful for young hungry like players yeah like so- somebody is gonna think what you think is interesting it might not be it might not be everybody but like if it's never put out there no one's gonna see and then like i put reminders in the calendar like three a week at least let's go and then like i come up with a good idea i'll just put it on my google keep uh and then like if it's just like oh man i'm getting killed today (laughs) but like it's in the calendar like just work up the list and it's like oh shoot that's actually kind of interesting like I'll, I'll, i'll tweet that out today um because like we spend enough time doing interesting stuff here that like it helps everybody that's following, especially like the parents and the players. Like mm-hmm. the full-time job parents don't spend two hours a day in sabermetric articles. So yeah. like if we were repurposing it and like giving them a nugget, that's super helpful for them too. Yeah. It's easy to underplay like how much info we have readily available that's yeah. still valuable. And we're just like, ah, I mean like what's, what's the point of that? Like yeah. everyone knows that. And then you just put something out like super clear, even like some of the stuff where you're talking about like, I, I think there's still a point that people yeah. uh, resonate with that like 10 percent of ev is from like the uh speed of the pitch ball, yeah speed you know? of the pitch yeah you know, what, you know what i'm saying like just stuff like that like it's been online for a while but you like, just gotta see it about a bunch it. Yeah. Yeah. and then you remember it. yeah or mm-hmm. else you get caught up in your feels yeah, yeah. well I, 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 would say, I would say one la- one last thing yeah um uh, I don't know if you've seen any past episodes of uh, Dating Corner on it. God damn it. Dating Corner? Yeah. yeah that's what we could do. That's what we could What's do. We could, we could set up some sort of incentive to where like uh, if someone hits a certain follower count by a certain time, then we'll do a, we'll do a full Dating Corner episode. Dude, we, well, uh, okay. So I want to oh, ask you about my I'll, dates. No, well, no, no. I mean, no. Hey, I'm down for that. But I just want to. <laughs> God damn it. I, I, I want to tell. I want to tell a Pandora's quick story. Box. I want to tell a quick story about one of the first times. 
All right, uh, so we're going to do a quick little uh, thanks for watching the episode uh, outro in case this needs to. No, no, no. It's, 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 not, it's, not, it's not bad. It's not bad. It, this is the story I'm thinking about. I don't think you no. should tell it. <laughs> you know, this is the problem. Wait, wait, <laughs> no, what story I'm thinking of. I know what story you're thinking of. It's okay. funny. Give, give, it's give funny, hint, but I don't know if it's good hint. for you two. Give me a hint. Ryan House. That actually is a story. Yeah, 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 yeah. Come on. All right. No, no, no. No, no, no. The Ryan House one. It's great episode. It's been a great episode. Episode 77. Uh, Peace. Dude, this is what he. This is what he does. No, no, no. At the end of the episode, the, the, like, the let, me story... do, let me do a dating quarter. Uh, talk about <laughs> talk about this thing. No, uh, we'll, and we'll, then we'll you fast. Episode seventy seven. Thank you guys for watching. All right. You got to come train at Driveline if you're interested. It's worth the investment. You put in the work. You're gonna get better. You might make the major leagues. You might not. But either way, you're gonna have a good experience. You're gonna learn how to get better at baseball, and you're gonna learn how to improve your life. You should also Let's come be go. a trainer at Driveline. Yes, yeah, supply. Go. We're we're hiring intern. That was a completely oh. unscripted outro. There you go. Peace. Peace.